Hello, my name is John Unruh-Fries and I'm a government teacher here at Hopkins High School and I'm here to tell you today about the mock election that we're going to be having on November 4th, which is election day, you'll vote in Royal Links. This is a copy of the ballot that you'll see when you go into Royal Links. You'll get to vote for three different offices during the mock election. Let's take a closer look at a couple of those offices. You'll get to vote for U.S. Senator, and you also get to vote for U.S. Representative District 3, which is the district in which Hopkins High School resides. Let's take another look here and show you that the winner is going to be the person who gets the most votes. The most votes for U.S. Senator and the most votes for U.S. Representative, that's the person who will be elected the winner. You'll also get to vote for U.S. President and Vice President. You vote for one team, but the election is held a little differently. You need to win in the Electoral College. And at Hopkins this year, we're going to be holding our very own Electoral College using your Royal Lynx groups. Let's take a look at 2004 and see how the Electoral College turned out. Looking at this map of the United States, you see a couple things. First of all, each state has a number in it. That's the number of electoral votes the state has. So a really big state like California gets 55 electoral votes. If you're a small populated state like Wyoming, you only have three. The other thing you'll see on this map is when the Democrats win a state, and it was John Kerry was the candidate in 2004, the states are blue. And when the Republicans, George Bush was the candidate, wins a state, it's in red. Notice all of these states through the center of the country won by George W. Bush. He got 286 electoral votes, and he was able to get past this very important line right here. You need 270 electoral votes to win. 286 gets him past the finish line. He gets elected President of the United States. And that's the story from 2004 of the Electoral College. Let's now jump to 2008 and take a look at the map. I blanked out all of the results. And one of the things that a lot of us who are really closely following this election do is we look at a lot of polls. And so what I did a couple weeks back is I went to see which states will John McCain absolutely positively win. They're a lock for him. Let's see what John McCain gets. He has 160 that are just locks for him. Here's his home state, Arizona. He wins it, 10 electoral votes. Here's Governor Palin's home state of Alaska three electoral votes, they're gonna win it. Now let's pop in Barack Obama's. He has 157 electoral votes. Here's his home state of Illinois. He gets big California with 55 electoral votes. Notice McCain has won many more states, but Obama is winning some big ones like California, like New York State, like his home state of Illinois. There's almost a tie here in states that they are just guaranteed to win. So now what's the deal with these gray states? These are the toss-ups. And here's where our Royal Lynx groups are gonna come in. Our election is only going to be playing with these gray states, the 19 gray states that are the toss-ups. All the Royal Lynx groups in our building are going to be distributed among these gray states. If a state is a large state, like a Florida with 27 electoral votes, there's going to be a lot of Royal Lynx groups inside of Florida. And if it's a small state like Montana, population-wise, there's going to be only one or two Royal Lynx groups inside the state of Montana. So your Royal Lynx group will be somewhere in one of these gray states. Let's look at an example. Let's look at Minnesota. If you have Broughton, Duran, Cumin, Pettit, or Thurl, you live in Minnesota for the sake of this simulation. And if the students in those Royal Lynx groups prefer John McCain, John McCain turns the state red, he gets 10 electoral votes, Barack Obama gets zero. If on the other hand, the students in these five Royal Lynx groups only, like Barack Obama more, he turns the state blue, he gets 10 electoral votes, and John McCain gets zero. Notice the Electoral College uses the winner-take-all system. You either win all or you get zero. This will be happening in those 19 gray states that I showed you on the previous map. Let's go back to that map. Let's see what happens here if we give Barack Obama the state of Minnesota. Notice his bar moves a little bit closer to that finish line. Let's make it neutral, and he loses those electoral votes. Let's pop it in for John McCain. John McCain's bar now is at 170. He only needs 100 more electoral votes, and he is elected the next president of the United States. Um, so let's make that happen. Let's give him Indiana. And 
give him Indiana. Let's give him Ohio, 20 big ones. What about uh, Pennsylvania? Getting closer and closer. He's now at 222. He needs 270. Let's give him Virginia, 13. Uh, what about the 15 from North Carolina? He's now at 250. He only needs 20 more, and he's the next president. Looks like this state would do it right here. Florida, 27 electoral votes. Notice his bar has moved beyond the finish line, and John McCain would be elected the president of the United States. So, just as a reminder, vote November 4th in Royal Links. Ask your Royal Links advisor. They'll tell you what state you're part of, and if you're over 18, you get to vote for Rio. Thanks for your time. Okay, ha, ha.